one of a message uh, whenever you're ready. <laughs> the title of the message is The Moral Mandate to Vote, Part 1. The Moral Mandate to Vote. And uh, we're going to start today in Ezekiel chapter 28. And so that's where we'll be starting in Ezekiel chapter 28. Verses 1 through 10. Now, when our nation, and by the way, you've been coming, well, I'll, I'll announce this at the end. I'm off today, folks. Okay. If I make mistakes, just blame my name. When our nation's founding fathers drafted the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, they were intent on giving us a republic. The republic is a form of government that guarantees the rights of each individual. They knew being faithful to their belief and understanding of God's Word, the Bible, and their inalienable rights came from God and from God alone. Uh, they were very, very well aware that man's sin nature, if left unchecked and unbridled, would produce the same kind of tyranny that they fled from in Britain. They knew that mortal man, when given the opportunity to assume too much power, would develop <coughs> A God complex. And we're going to take a good look at that in Ezekiel chapter 28 today. Now, here <coughs> we're going to look at Ethabel. This is old Ethabel the third. And he was a contemporary of Daniel at the time. And as we start out here, uh, this takes place, thank you, uh, with, uh, in 573 B.C. Now the word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. Now that's a capital G. <laughs> Those meaning that he is deity. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God. Though thou hast said, Thine heart is the heart of God. And now you see the Lord is going to chide him a tad bit here. He says, <coughs> Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Remember, Daniel was looked upon as being an extremely wise man uh, by Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom there. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver in thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic. By the way, the traffic that he's referring to, good, in case you don't understand what that means, it's about slave trade. Is what he's referring to, slave trade. Mm. Hath increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they do, and they shall draw their swords against thee the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy, defile thy brightness. Well, that's exactly what he did. It was Nebuchadnezzar's army that came against him. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the sea. But you see, old Ethabel, he had a fortress built upon the top of a, a large mountain, and it was almost an impenetrable. And in order for... Uh, the people to come through and traffic to go through his area, they would have to pay him. And he felt that being where he was in his fortress upon this mountain, that he was, uh, well, that, that he was going to be, he, he could not be defeated. Uh, and so that's when he said, I am a God. I'm a God. I'm all powerful. Who can touch me? Right? Well, God says to him here, Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations. They shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit. Thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and not God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, it, saith the Lord God. So in other words, God is telling him, wait till you tell these fellows that I send to kill you that you are God. 
they're not going to buy it. Okay? And you're going to find out that you're not a God Jesus. Because guess what, folks? There's one thing about God, they right. don't die. Right? That's right. God doesn't die. <laughs> also, black women is so, not God, too. Like here, the, the founding fathers were very well aware of the fact that living under the persecution of a cruel dictator was no worse than the anarchy of a collective democracy. And that is when uh, everybody seems to be doing whatever they want to do. When everybody uh, is of one mind, or as it says in Proverbs, one of one person. If you turn over to Genesis chapter 11, here, in Genesis chapter 11, that's exactly what they had in mind uh, with old Nimrod uh, and his people when they decided to make the Tower of Babylon. And uh, <coughs> as we start out in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Well, that language was the language, the only language that uh, there was before the flood. And it came to pass as they journeyed for the east that they found in a plain in the land of Shinar and dwelt there. And they said to one another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime for thy, had they for mortar. And they said, Go, let us build a city and tower whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make, make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now, the guy that was behind this treason against God, if you'll turn over to back to, to Genesis 10, 9, and it says, well, 10, 8, and Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty, on, mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it was said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Well, Nimrod had a way, he hunted men, okay? And he was uh, known to be an extremely wicked and a rebellious leader. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go, let us go down there and confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build a city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Well, you know, there's an old saying, people fear what they don't understand. And it's an interesting thing if you've ever been in places where uh, in a foreign country somewhere where people are talking and they're all looking at you but they're speaking in a language they're sure you don't understand. Okay? Uh, pretty much they know they're talking about you. Okay? But when, when that happens and, and we know that it really bothers people a lot if you're within a group and there's people that are speaking in an unknown language other than because you, you, you have no idea what they're talking about. That's what exactly what happened here when the Lord confounded their language and they were all speaking in different languages. They ended up going to 70 different ways. Out of that, you ended up with 70 different nations. Out of that. And so, the Founding Fathers, being a, a religious, very religious people, we're very, very aware that uh, this form of government, a republic, in order to be effective, could only work when applied to a, a moral and a religious, God-fearing people. It would be totally ineffective and unworkable if applied to any other. And with that, we want to take a look at what happens when you have a people that are not God-fearing, when you have a people uh, that that uh, are rebellious and treasonous against God. If you turn over to Ezekiel chapter 22, and in Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 23 to 31, we read this. 
And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her that thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon the day of indignation. You know, to hold back the rain was always seen as a curse of God, as a judgment of God. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion, ravening the praise. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasures and the precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Now, the prophets here were the religious leaders. The religious leaders. Boy, we have the very same thing happening today. You have the name and claim it, the prosperity people. <coughs> uh, and especially, they really go after the elderly. I mean, they really do go after the elderly. Uh, and I mean, they, they hit them up and they shake them down. But he goes on, he says, her priests, and by the way, the priests, they were the judiciary, they were the judiciary, <coughs> have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. See if this sounds familiar, folks, especially with that unclean court decision of last year yeah. about sodomite yep. marriage when they took the very first divine institution that God gave us, that of marriage and the family, right. a good thing and a clean thing, and they defiled it, they made it unto an unclean thing, when they call what they call same-sex marriage. Abomination. God had already ruled 6,000 years ago. He calls it fornication, and he calls it an abomination. Okay. Now believe me, fornication and abomination are not the same as the divine institution of marriage. Mm -hmm. Often you hear in the course today, whenever the opposition is trying to uh, keep Roe v. Wade going, they, they always use the term sub law. Well, no, it's not sub law, it's murder. Okay? The sub law was what God <coughs> said uh, when he gave us the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt yeah. not murder. But before that, in Genesis 9, he made it very clear what was sub law. And the third point of divine institution of human government was to preserve the image of God that being man. The entire purpose Amen. Of, of, of the divine uh, human government was to preserve the image of God. Right. And so he goes on, he said, Our priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. And that's what that unclean court said. They said, marriage of sodomites, and by the way, now they just had a case out west where I guess two men married a one woman. So now that's okay. Oh boy. At least they married a woman. That's you know. terrible. Uh, neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from the Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. Her princes, and by the way, the princes were the legislators of that day, and the midst thereof are like wolves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ravening the prey to shed blood and destroy souls to get dishonest gain. Yep. Her prophets have dubbed them with untempered martyr, seeing vanity, divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God when the Lord hath not spoken. The apostate priest. Folks, and that is the apostate church, if ever there was. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yes, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Well, you know, I can say today there are a lot of men and women in this country that are standing up. They are saying, here I am, Lord, use me. Yep. And I am privileged to be a part of a, <coughs> a, a group of Christian leaders in this state an organization called No Compromise to get together with exactly that no compromise. It means no, no compromise. We're not going to do it. We're not going to back up. And some of those people that you saw up on that board just a few minutes ago, those names that were up there are involved. They're part of that organization. And I saw for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap for me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord. And boy, uh, God does what he says. And then, 
I want to take you over to uh, here the, the wives like their husbands were uh, God fearing and chaste and they taught their daughters to turn away from and to avoid the ways the wicked ways of the world and that was the wives of the founding fathers and if you go over to Proverbs chapter 31 in Proverbs chapter 31 we want to read verses 10 through 31 who can find a virtuous woman uh, today I, I mean it's pretty hard in the public school system you probably have to go down to elementary school one today for her price is far above rubies the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that she shall have no need of spoil she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willing with her hands she is like the merchant ships she bringeth forth her food from afar she rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens she considereth the field and buyeth it and with the fruit of her hands she planteth the vineyard she girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arm she perceiveth that her merchandise is good her candle goeth not out by night she layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold its staff she stretches out her hand to the poor yet she reaches you know that is one of the most important parts of being uh, an honorable woman as he's talking about those that that will and being a virtuous woman that will stretch out her hands to the poor She is not afraid of the snow. Remember that, ladies, today as you leave here. <laughs> An honorable woman is not afraid of what's out there. Okay. She, she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates, which she sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. Yep. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Yep. Her children will rise up and call her blessed. Yep. Her husband also, and he praises Praise her. her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, so shall be she be praised. All the way. Give her the, the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. And so those are that description I say would fit a number of you ladies in here today. And they not do. That's the way it used to be, and those were the ways in the days of the founding fathers. Uh, let me tell you something, they couldn't have did all of what they did without having good women behind them Amen. Yep. and they knew they knew that uh, they were going to pay a price for it. many paid a very very severe price and just ask yourself out here today what is your freedom worth and what is your liberty worth right and folks is life worth living without freedom and liberty is life worth living as slaves I just today got an email and the email was uh, from three prison inmates it's about three prison inmates who have asked uh, to be given the death penalty instead of life because they don't want to serve the rest of their life in, in prison being, being uh, of course I believe that probably Planned Parenthood and the Democratic Party is probably pressuring them to do that. They really want to start pushing and believe me, they want to start pushing uh, this euthanasia and Obama's back and, and uh, Obamacare folks uh, the pushing uh, of the uh, death, what they call the deathbed mentality, is there. They want to eliminate the elderly as they came right out. Ram, Rahm Emanuel's brother said, anyone over, anyone 70 or over should be willing to die. Wrong. Now, of course, these people never ever want to leave by example. Right. <coughs> no, not ever. So here, 
we take a look at what the world is saying out there, what the world is pushing uh, on our women Amen. today, because the women are being affected more than men. Yep. That's a, a very obvious thing. The fact is, you know, if you say, well, the enemy always attacks men in the area of pride, of pride but women in the area of discernment, if anything will prove that is the vast majority of people that voted for Obama were women. Yep. And, and they expect the same thing to happen for Hillary. Well, that does not take good judgment, folks, at all. No, it doesn't. Nope. Uh, you have the, the wickedness out there is unbelievable. Uh, abortion biz, the kill woman runs billboard for women to brag about their abortions. Uh, Here's this article up here. Uh, Preterm in Cleveland is promoting be proud of your abortion, brag about it, tell people. Uh, you had this woman on uh, who came out last week. She's a five-foot-tall abortionist, uh, and she was bragging about how uh, it was her Christian faith that made her what? want to kill babies. What? <laughs> oh, please. That's what, she, that's what she was saying. Now, this is liberalism today. This is the mindset. And uh, here, again, preterm is, is convincing these girls out there to, to go out and brag that you're, you're proud uh, that you killed your children. This is the mindset. Remember, Planned Parenthood also has had, and they've had for a long time now, in comic book form, these uh, tracks that they're handing out to these young girls. And they actually say how being a slut, and they use that word <coughs> slut, can be a positive experience. Okay? Now, folks, this is lunacy. But, but remember, uh, everything about what is liberal today is in total opposition to what God's Word and Bible teaches. Yep. And that's what communism is in total opposition to what the Word of God teaches. Uh, <coughs> what we were telling you er earlier, federal administrative agencies preparing for civil war locked and loaded. It goes on and it tells you in here. And, and we know about this a long time ago. Okay, uh, The different agencies, including actually the VA, is one of them. Uh, but the, uh, the, drug and, the Food and Drug Administration, the, of course the EPA, they've been a, a terrorist organization from the beginning, uh, and a, a number of them are actually purchasing SWAT military style equipment, body armor, riot helmet shields, and firearms. That's happening now. Uh, yeah. But believe it or not, uh, even the, the Social Security agency. I guess they're going to arm us whole folks. Okay. I don't know. But, but the, see, we've been telling you about this, and a lot of people don't want to believe this. It's Not like, if I don't believe it, then it can't hurt me. What I don't know can't hurt me. Wrong. Well, well, what, what you don't know can kill you, and it does. And those things happen every day. But those are the times we're living in. And I had just written a, a letter for our newsletter uh, to send out. And it kind of warns people about exactly these things, get preparing for exactly. We are here. This is it now. We are now in the great apostasy. And so when we take a look at some of what uh, affects the, the women in our country today, it's nothing new. As you say, there's nothing new under the sun. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 13. And Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 17. Likewise, Thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesied out of their own heart, and prophesied thou against them. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the woman, to the women that sell pillows to all the armholes, and make her chiefs upon the head of every statue to hunt soul. Well, they were used, they were used in their occultic practices, these pillows and these uh, armholes that they would use. Will you hunt the souls of my people, and will you save the souls alive that come unto you? And will you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley, for pieces of bread, to slay the souls that should not die, and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? That sounds like the view. 
Right. Yep. Yeah. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, where with you there with ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. And he's talking about the idea of what they used to do in those days. They would take your soul, okay, and they would, <laughs> under witchcraft, transfer it to a bird or a bat or something, and your soul would fly away from you, okay? So, mine I'd put in one of those great big slow birds, you know, so it couldn't get far, but uh, the uh, penguin or something. Yeah, but this is, this is a part of the occult practice, so if you, don't, if, you, <laughs> if you don't understand what they're talking about there today, and he says, Wherefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherefore there are you hunt their souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms. And will let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt, to make them fly. And will chase also while I tear and deliver my people. In other words, he's going to destroy uh, all of their little occultic materials that they use uh, in their witchcraft. I've told you many times about when we went to Toledo, when they had that big abortion mill, that huge place. And, they were they lost their building uh, due to eminent domain because they built a, a baseball st uh, stadium. And when we went up there, they I, they asked if I would come and speak. So when we showed up, I was with uh, Pastor Luke Owens that used to be here with us and John McTurden, and we saw the door was open, so we figured they were inviting us in. So I went on in there, and uh, this place had three stories. So I went up. Uh, to the second floor up there, and, and it was long. They must have had probably uh, at least 10 or 12 of the eight-foot tables like in the other room there, end to end, and they had all of this witchcraft material on them. On every station, right right next to each other, they would have all of the, the candles. They had the brown, the green, the orange candles that they used, and then, of course, the black and the red ones they used for for murder, the white ones they'll use for a, a marriage ceremony. Uh, and then they had all of the herbs, they had all of these herbs to use in their witchcraft practices. They had all of this stuff, but I found one of the things that was very interesting, uh, right next to all their lesbian pornography, they had all this lesbian pornography, they had the NIV Bible. They had, that's their Bible, they used the NIV at every station, they're open next to their their pornography, and uh, and these women there were all witches. This was a witch's covenant, a big witch's covenant to ran that abortion mill. And he says, because with your lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore you shall see no more vanity, nor divine devil, divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. In other words, he's saying, uh, it's time to pack it up, girls. The fat lady's going to sing. You're, you're all finished here. Yep. And uh, the way that God did that is he removed them. He just took them out. And he's staying here. That, uh, those people that should have repented, those that he had called that should have repented, were persuaded by these wicked women not to to just be and not to follow after the Lord. And then, if you take a look at over in Isaiah chapter 3, and I mentioned a few minutes ago about the view. This really does describe the women of the view. I have to laugh whenever I hear O'Reilly talk about the ladies of the view. Please! We are not ladies at all. <laughs> Calm down, Doug. <laughs> uh, started in Isaiah chapter 3. He's talking about, and what we see so prevalent today, uh, it's so prevalent that uh, so many of these women that are involved in the uh, political left have Jewish names. Uh, in fact, uh, like Hillary Rodham, whose real name is Rosen, but so many of them out there today. And as the Bible says that they are not Jews, they are counterfeit, they are apostate. But here we read, as far as my children are, are there, as far as for my people, verse 12, I'll get it right. 
<coughs> chapter 3, verse 12. Children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Now, the word children here does not mean an adolescent. This one means an incompetent person. The word that it's used, an incompetent person, like Obama has on his staff. Right. And women rule over them. The idea that women given as rulers were given as a punishment. Right, exactly. Oh my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. The Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For you have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your hands. Now, what had happened, he had called for men to stand up and repent and become the leader. Right. And they were all afraid. Yep. The leaders were all afraid to stand up and take charge. Exactly. So God gave them women as their leaders and incompetent people. Now the next time the word ch the child is used earlier, children, in fact if you go to verse 5 it says, and the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. That That is an actual child or an adolescent that it's referring to here. Yeah. What mean you that you beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God of hosts? Moreover, the Lord saith unto the daughters of Zion, are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks, and wanton eyes walking with menace as they go and making a tinkle with their feet. It's, it's like today those that are very wealthy uh, out there dress like they're very wealthy. They adorn themselves. Uh, and therefore, the Lord... Well, in those days, too, to prove that you, if you were a woman and you wanted to uh, prove that you were wealthy and of, of means, social status, one, you would be stay out of the sunlight. You had to stay out of the sunlight so you'd have light skin. And two, uh, you would have um, a handmaid. And that handmaid would fool around with your hair and uh, they would do your hair up in what they call a beehive or whatever it used to be called and, and they would load it down with all kinds of little trinkets and a lot of them are doing that today I mean you see a lot of these these kids with all of this metal in their face yeah you know and sometimes you're worried that if they get close to a magnet you know <laughs> somewhere I, I thought about that if they were to walk by when you know there in a wrecking yard when you have these great big magnets that they go up face first. <laughs> but yeah, they did that. Okay. And so here he's talking about that, these women with all of these things, these cowls and these tires and all these things in their hair and all around. Uh, it says, therefore the Lord will smite thee with a scab in the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. The Lord will discover their secret parts. Well, it means he's going to give them baldness. He's going to give them baldness. They're going to lose. So they're not going to have any hair for their handmaidens to fool with. And then he says he's going to discover their secret parts. Well, what happened in that, in those days when armies went to war, the first thing they would do is when they would kill the men of fighting age. When they captured them, they would either kill them uh, but in the w women, they would uh, and children, they would sell as slaves, and they would they would put up a, and they still the Muslims are still doing this. Mm -hmm. The Muslims are still doing this today. Yeah. They would have a big platform. They would do it always in the gates of the city. That's where all the commerce and the and the uh, government was taking place. And the enemy, uh, the women, would when they would take and they would they would strip the captive women bare naked. And the, the enemy, the women um, who were their captives, if you will, would, would humiliate them up there because they had a hatred. And when it says they will discover your secret parts, as you see, uh, what they would like when they would sell a, a horse, they'd show you his teeth or hindquarters. Well, with these women, they showed you something else. What they did, they did, they give them cavity checks like they do down at the prisons and they would humiliate him, humiliate him there. And it says, and the Lord would, would, and in that day the Lord will take away their bravery of their tinkling ornaments and their feet and their calls and their round tires like moons, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers and the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands 
and the tablets and the earrings and the rings and the nose jewels. <laughs> you wonder if they could hardly even walk. <laughs> and the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the whipples and the crisping pins, the glasses that, and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stick, instead of a girdle of rent, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Now the burning, what, he, what he's talking about with the burning here was that they would have to go out and work in the field. They wouldn't be able to get in the, uh, inside with, with a nice white skin. Now they'd have to go out and work in the field, and they would be sunburned. And boy, you got to know something. When you're out there working in that hot sun all day, and you're a woman and you're bald, you've had better days. Okay? And that's, that's what was heading their way. And then the men, well, the men, they didn't fare so well either. The men shall fall by the sword, and the mighty in war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Now folks, why does all that happen? You see, God did all of that. He did all of that. But why did he do all of that? Because the Bible says that all nations that forget their God will be turned into hell. And I can tell you if those women were here today, they could probably tell you that what they went through if they considered to be hell. And then, if you turn over to chapter 9, Proverbs 9. In Proverbs chapter 9, verses 13 through 18. Ah, these go there. Ah. And this is so prevalent today within liberalism uh, today, in the Hollywood, in the media. Uh, a foolish woman is clamorous. Uh, she is simple and knoweth nothing. You know, if you watch these talking heads, these uh, contributors, if you will, to the news, have you ever noticed today that it's mostly all women today that are in the news? Yes. And, when, and that word clamorous means wow. boisterous or someone who, who's just talking all the time. Right. Wow. And it's an interesting thing because you get them on there, they have this thing called the five or whatever, and you have all these women and they're all talking at the same time, all at the same, and nobody's listening. Now, that's an amazing thing. Okay. Uh, there was an old poem. Remember that old poem? There was an old owl sitting on an old oak. The more he heard, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why can't those girls be like that old bird? <laughs> but anyhow, he says, A foolish woman is clamorous, she is simple and knoweth nothing, for she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat high, in the high places of the city, to call passengers, who go right on their way. Who is simple, let him turn in hither. Well, there's a lot of so simple guys out there that turn in. Yeah. And it's for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, stolen water is your sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and their guests are in the depths of hell. Boy, do we have a lot of that today, though. Yes. And then, uh, when we talked about getting back to the wisdom by where are we at there on that? How much time do I have left? Uh, six and a half minutes. Okay. Getting back to the wisdom given by God to the founding fathers, um, they gave us a republic <coughs> form of government that consists of an executive branch, a legislative branch, and a judicial branch. Now these were to govern by the will of the people. Did you know that? Amen. Is anybody that these branch were to govern by the will of the people? You're the people. Amen. In other words, we're their boss. Right. And, and it was the duty of uh, each branch of government to keep the other two branches from exceeding the bounds of their authority. It was the duty of the people to be eternally vigilant in keeping all three branches from exceeding their realm of authority. And this is where we are, why we have anarchy today in our government. This is why we have high treason. We have a man in the White House, a, a wicked man, an ungodly man, yeah. who has is, who is gone about, uh, if it's a sin, if it's the sin of abortion or if it's the sin of sodomy, whatever that sin is, one that hates Christians out there today, uh, 
He's an extremely wicked man. How many of you saw that those those tears last week? When oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How, many of you, how many of you recognized what was taking place? Okay, folks. What happens? This is this is something they use. They've been all oh, for years and years in Hollywood. They get people to cry whenever they were supposed to cry. Uh, they would put a little chemical. In fact, that stuff that you use it used to be called heat, where you would rub on sore places. And you just put, you just rub. Now, if you watch Obama, it was like right on cue. He was, he was going like this, rubbing his eye, you know, just, and then all of a sudden, a minute or two later, the tears came. Mm -hmm. That's what they do, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're not supposed to know that. Right. Remember, they're supposed to be a lot smarter than you are. Oh, that's what you think. And, and you're not supposed to let them know that you're smart because it would disappoint them. Oh, well. Oh, well. So, you have this. We have a Senate in Ohio that has exceeded his bond. They do what they want. We have a governor that tried to adopt Common Core. <laughs> Our public school systems are nothing but great gates of hell. Just like Martin Luther said they would be back in the 1500s. Great gates of hell, unless God's word in the Bible ran paramount. But now, these things are all happening just as God's word in the Bible said they would. And, these, and what you're seeing today unfolding every day. All of these things that are unfolding are exactly what Scripture calls the birth pains. These are the things that happen to you before the start of the tribulation. Exactly. Now listen, for some people, things couldn't get any worse. Things are going to get really bad. Okay? Yeah. For others, they couldn't get any better in the sense that there's never been a better opportunity. For those of us that are born again, yeah. Bible-believing Christians, and you need to, to try to remember this because time is running out. And there's never been a better opportunity for us to place some crowns in heaven. It is right now or never. It's right now or never. This is our time, right now. Yeah. And so these things here, when it comes to what do we do? We do not accept political correctness. Right. What do we do? We refute political correctness. And right. what do we do? We replace it with moral correctness. Not PC, but MC. Right. And, and you need to be bold. Amen. See, the opposition is taught that you people are supposed to be stupid. So when they say to you, I'm offended, you offended me, you're supposed to give them whatever they want. That's right. But when you say back to them, I'm more offended than you are. <laughs> that confuses them. <laughs> they don't know what to do because they haven't been taught about that part. Yeah. So what you need to do is get prepared. What you need to do, and this is why I encourage you, to run to that tea party, get to that meeting. Let me tell you what it's all about. It's about God, it's about country, it's about family, it's about each other, it's about the church, and it's about liberty and freedom. And I had, as you know, I had some problems, with some rebellion when I first took over the tea party. We had a group of, of these kind of women in there that thought we were giving too much time to God. No. That God had too too great a place. And uh, I, in a very, very clear manner, explained to these women that you can't give God too great a place. Amen. And the God reason our country is in such shape as it is is because we haven't given Him His proper place. Right. And what I told them very clearly, folks, listen, if God is not invited here, either am I. And when I said that, all of the men stood up one at a time right there, and every one of them refuted those women. And since then, we haven't had a problem. They kind of fell in line. They got the message, okay, that, that we were not neo-evangelical, effeminized people. They were men. And, uh, like, You're up to a five-minute prayer now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're giving me five minutes of the prayer now. They said they tried to tell me a 30-second prayer would be sufficient. <laughs> yeah. So, anyhow, like I told Connie Schultz when she stopped by out there, when we were out in front of the abortion mill, she stopped and she said, Look at you! You're all men! I put an observation. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, That's right, Connie. These are men. They're real men, Connie. Amen. They're not ashamed of who they are or what they do. Like you. 
and, and she said some bad things to me, <laughs> and then she left. <laughs> so, you see what happens is, I just never believed it when they told me I was supposed to be stupid. You see, I just didn't buy into it. And that's why I have a lot of fun with the liberals out there. Amen. And so, with that, just remember this. And I want to conclude this way, you see. Uh, all in all, remember, job one, above and, be, and, uh, and beyond everything else, job one is the Great Commission. Right. Always keep that in mind. Amen. Always keep that in mind. We would much rather convert our enemies <coughs> Right. Then shoot our enemies. That's Rather right. convert them to kill them, right? Yeah. So always remember that job one is the Great Commission. That's where you win. That's it's a win-win for everybody. Amen. Right. So with that, we're going to uh, say this: We've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Spurry Road in Newberry, Ohio. Our zip code is 44065. And you've been listening to us this morning on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That is the Eagle 104.3 FM. And until next work we want next week, we want to say good morning. God bless and remember always, always keep fighting the fight.